turn my video did I've okay. turned the video yeah. off and back on again since uh, so we, you guys have to switch see if they switch us cameras this time. And maybe well, maybe it's not. Uh, not switch. That's weird. It sees the camera. <laughs> just doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah, go back to the old camera. There. Let's see. The camera. Background. That's all I do. Yeah, I'll we'll just go back to this one. It For some reason, that camera doesn't want to work today. It's probably needs rebooted. All right. Now, we'll get started. Okay. I think everyone knows Ohio Linux Fest is now scheduled for September 8th and 9th, Friday and Saturday. Um, Columbus, same place as last year. It's, uh, I like the uh, the convention center, but it's also part well, of the, you know, it's the same, same complex. Yeah. Same so you're going to have a hard time finding it unless they were signed up for this time, which we were there last night. I didn't have that before. Anyway, let me walk all this. They, and then everyone will be asked, it's like, oh, we never heard of that. Yeah. Well, oh, it's Linux. Oh, it's in the Electronic science reading. All right. Since Carl is uh, absent, or Carl's online, but anyone else is absent from there, I will switch. Um, yeah, but if you, I think that might be better since Carl's the only one online. Carl, sorry, gonna have crappy video. <laughs> can't get the camera. This camera is not working well. And we can switch this around. I don't know how this is going to work or not. Maybe. And we'll see how that works. All right. And Yes, it's not, not terrible, but not great. All right, wallpaper not available. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's my background. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to get started. It's uh, a little after 7 30 and 7 40. All right. Well, I think uh, everyone sign in. You get the focus on well, anyway, Jack's going to give us a good rundown on where we've been and where we're going, and eventually, maybe next month, where we are. <laughs> so, yep. that's uh, that'll work out pretty good. And a lot of this stuff is old timers will probably recognize, and we may even predate some of that. <laughs> so, I hope so. <laughs> so. It'll be interesting to reminisce over the old uh, HTML version two and three. Things might really do a lot. Websites were pretty primitive in the early days. Yeah, uh, who's all going down to Linux Fest? Anyone? Yeah, well, three, four, five, yeah. half a dozen. Well, that'd be good. I want to know who's speaking on this. You know, they are they? Yeah, so you could be a speaker if you want to go. Yeah, there you go. They'll, they'll pay for your uh, yeah. that would be fun. You I'm nervous just giving us speaking here. I don't know if well, I can do it on, on stage. <laughs> well, and then they record it and uh, you can watch it forever after. Yeah, that sounds even worse. That's even worse. <laughs> oh, no. 
Well, that's uh, at least what I recorded here. It goes up on our website, and no one ever watches it. So. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't go on. That's the website. a little better. It actually just goes on Google Group, and I haven't even put up the last two or three. I guess I should. I keep forgetting to do that. I get home. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and get started then, since it's coming up on eight o'clock, and everyone's. All right. Let's do it. Here's our guru of. Uh, open okay. source so yeah i decided to do the history of the early internet and i wanted to bring it into right around 2000 and then i want the next presentation to be like the current internet which honestly it's there's so much in the last 20 years that it might i don't know i don't know Mike, we'll see Mike's pulling over. this one <laughs> this one i feel like you guys know way more than i do so uh we'll see but here's my New new background for the presentation. Nice. Yeah, thanks. All right. So anyway. Okay. I called this one the rise of the internet, and part two is going to be the fall of the internet. <laughs> 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 because the internet was way cooler and simpler back then. Okay, so this is uh I made this website using all HTML2 spec. Ooh. Um which is actually, there's so much more in the HTML2 spec than I expected. I expected to have like really nothing, tables. but we have a ton of stuff. Tables. I didn't use any tables, oh, mainly because yeah, I'm lazy, I think. I'm gonna, but also because I didn't really need tables, so I don't think. I'm gonna pull but, three is that better? Yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. I guess my plan was just to kind of walk through if I can figure out how to do this. Nice. Kind of falling off a little bit. That's okay. Okay. So this is a sweet quote. This is from 1995. What internet hucksters won't tell you is that the internet is one big ocean of unedited data without any pretense of completeness. Lacking editors, reviewers, or critics, the internet has become a wasteland of unfiltered data. You don't know what to ignore and what's worth reading. Yeah, that was yeah, 30 years that. ago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he went bitter fast. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> right away. We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back and forth. Uh, basically, uh, if you guys know anything about HTML, this will be very basic. But if you don't, it's all pretty interesting. Um, HTML was based off of SGML, which was like the standard standardized generalized markup language, or standard generalized markup language. Yeah, which was a basic like. It, it's very XML feeling from what I was reading. It's like you give a tag, you put something in it, and it's it's a way to like parse the document and, and like pull stuff out based on the text. And they were very semantic. They were like paragraph, section, like uh, I don't know, like Head like body. very specific, so you can pull out the right semantic stuff. And HTML is much different in the sense that it's much more concise because they want to make a simple version, basically, of HTML that everyone could use. And actually. From a couple of YouTube videos I watched, there was like a huge heated debate when HTML was first introduced from the SGML crowd. I was like, "This is terrible! Everything you're doing is bad." <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, it's, what's, his, uh, what's his name? Um, the computer lib guy. He has a whole book about it. This whole presentation. Okay, yeah. Well, it's um, it's on computer file on YouTube. If you want to look it up, it's called a uh, HTML poison or panacea. It's pretty interesting, but um. Yeah, okay, so the way HTML documents work is you define the document up top with this uh, bang doc type HTML. And then this HTML tag holds the whole page for you. So uh, that is the wrong button. Okay, so this is the console of your web browser. Uh, the console basically shows you what you get from the server and what's getting displayed. Um, so from the network, I'm getting, I have a brief button. Yeah, I'm doing a basic get request to the server, getting back all this HTML. Hey, you have a favicon. Favicon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually valid too? Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like, okay. Wait, wait, do I even have it? I yeah, think I got... it. Well, it downloaded it. It's oh, it downloaded easy. it probably because I have it on the main page. It's yeah. up here. Yeah, there's a fact for anyone wondering. It's the little penguin I put. 
Let's know you're blocking the screen. Oh. No. <laughs> okay, but anyway, when you hit an endpoint, you'll get the um, HTML back. And this is basically the browser's way of telling you all the network requests that are being made all the time. So this didn't exist back. <laughs> Web browsers have gotten way fancier since uh, well, since they started. But basically, this this will tell you everything that happens between the client and the server. The, the browser is the client. The server is where I'm fetching the data. And you can actually just look at the response. And if your response is semantic HTML, your response is literally going to be the whole web page. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, you hit a web page. Web page fetches HTML. HTML gets displayed. Cool. That's how that works. And then the way it gets rendered is your web page looks through your HTML tags. I'll get into this a little later, but. This is also illegal, actually. I just noticed. Can't do this. No class. I'm not sure if there's language yet. But anyway, HTML is like the top <laughs> level thing on your page. So everything you have is inside this HTML tag. Um, and then there's head, which is like metadata for the for the website. And uh, there's a title, which isn't metadata. It goes right here. This is the title. And uh, yeah, very basic stuff. Meta still meta did exist in HTML 2.0, apparently. Head existed, uh, title existed. Uh, I have a lot of other stuff that I usually put in here, but none of that existed, so I got rid of all of it. Um, okay. And I was I saw that a lot of early web pages, they liked to capitalize everything. So I did that. Oh, yeah. Everything was for some reason capitalized. Was a from oh, SQL. It was. Okay. A carryover from SQL. Yeah, a lot of SQL people got into yeah. because that's one of the few places where you're like, okay, I can tell this apart. Because remember, you didn't have like a lot of people were editing in like Notepad. Oh yeah. So it's like this way I know this is the this is the, the tag and this is the content. Right. They weren't great. Right. right. Okay. Right over memory. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. So um yeah. So Basic HTML syntax is you make a body tag and you put all your HTML inside it. Um, so that's what's going on here. Uh, I will get into the history now. Okay. So the World Wide Web started at CERN. It was made by Tim Berners-Lee. Um, he called his first hypertext system Inquire, which I thought was cool. And then... Uh, he started in like the early 80s and his prototype web browser came out 10 years later. HTML at CERN was just a way to internally pass around documents when he was creating it. But he realized, and it didn't come out of a vacuum, that like the whole world was pushing to this like worldwide web, it was pushing towards it. And he was like, maybe I can use this HTML thing I made internally to be like the language of the internet in like a, a and make make web pages that way. And I, the real reason I think uh, he was like so integral to the making of the web was he created the first web browser. And so there's actually a website that lets you go right to it. Oh. Um, hosted on CERN. It's the first web browser trying try to recreate it in all its glory. And uh, the way you get, I can't, I, I've messed around with it a little bit. Basically, like open HTML files, mm -hmm. so that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And you can like create new HTML files too. That's right. Yeah. I remember that screen. <laughs> yeah, that's I thought screen. this was really interesting. <laughs> um, let's see if I can just mess around. Well, some of this came from like Kermit and uh, um, in, in particular, well, of course, we're looking Gopher. at a small talk mm -hmm. interface, but more importantly, yes, um, Gopher and um. What was the one I used on the Tarji? Um, it was uh, made by the, yeah, right. It was Gopher, Gopher. because yeah. Gopher uh, was these uh, text based web pages, yeah, actually. Well, essentially, yeah. hypertext pages. Mm. And you would go through link the link yeah. the link. And I got follow. really good at that. That was because mm. at the time, a lot of us didn't even have. We didn't have a TCP IP stack. We didn't have any socks. We were just essentially dialing in. Dialing through a machine. So we're yeah. just not a terminal. So that let us go through things without worrying about, oh, God, there's going to be a picture. They only have a one-minute screen. 
Well, well they um, didn't have pictures and go. You, you also couldn't no. actually get the files unless you had a separate session yeah. for FTP. FTP. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Gopher, I mean, it's called Gopher because it was made by the University of Minnesota, the Gophers. Uh, and really just like, well, I mean, it's, you know, so they're, um, and so it was their tool. And it had kind of grown out of finger and a couple of other pieces, mm -hmm. but then there were other things going on, such as Waze. I mean, anyway, Waze? W-A-I-S. Yeah, I remember that. Um, mm -hmm. Which was a searching tool for documentation, but it was like, I don't remember. I don't, I don't think I, I ever used it much once. Um, and there were other things like Archie and Veronica. Oh, yeah, right. Um, oh, yeah. So, but most mm -hmm. things you were doing, you were doing by Telnet. You were, you, mm -hmm. were, you know, those the, the two Telnet main tasks FTP. with those. Uh, you know, Telnet did FTP, and then you just go for it. That was the shiny way to go, oh. like, find the stuff you wanted to read because somebody had already done some. And work. there were no search engines. Yeah. 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 And the lack of search engines, the only way you could find something. Oh, I should have brought this in. I'll bring it in next. I have a yellow pages for the internet. It's a book. This nice. is a book, yellow pages book. Yeah. That's good. That was published and it was the yellow pages for the internet. And you go flipping looking for, you know, plumbers. Well, they didn't have people online for that, but you went up on the university you wanted to go to or something like that. And they would have their web address in there. And you know, it was always http dot slash slash you know i mean uh, yeah. you could it's not put that in uh -huh. you know there was there's yeah. actually another web browser that was being really annoying i really wanted it to work but it's called old web dot today oh. and this actually is a emulator written totally in javascript because everything's written totally in javascript for some reason <laughs> um that lets you emulate old web but it wasn't working for me. I don't know, so oh there you go netscape but it, it runs an instance of like old mac os and then it like Runs an instance of whatever this is, and then GeoCities. It doesn't oh, load. It doesn't load. It's so sad. I wish it did. Well, GeoCities.com doesn't have anything there anymore. Oh, it does. Oh, nice. Let's go. It wasn't working yesterday. It was working today. I had a GeoCities. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, I was going to go into this when uh, I was talking about the JavaScript section, but I guess I'm, I'm into it now. But it's cool. It's like you you could click on whatever browser emulator you want, and it loads an instance of like oh, nice. old Mac. What's this? This is old web dot today. Old web dot today. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's like that was pretty sweet. And I tried to do it. I tried to just let's see if it works today. It probably won't because it's being really annoying. There you go. Well, it's trying. It's yeah, nice. Okay. It's, it's giving me one avid liquid user portal site. So this was a lug back in the day, before yeah. it, is it before it became. That's how it look would look. No, no, this is a, okay. literally a different site because it's like it's cached uh, somewhere. I think. Oh, oh, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, it's avid liquid. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, avid mm -hmm. liquid user. I'm not sure. When did you try? Let's like, try this. So it's HTTP bubble. Sun site. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. I want to send it there. So, uh, so S U N S I T E dot U N C dot E D U. Oh my God. Let's see if it's there. Wow. Sweet. Wow. Look, this is where you downloaded so much stuff. Oh my God. And you would wow. get hammered. And you had to you... check that whole thing. Yeah. Look, this is clean. This is all uh, HTTP. Yeah. HTML2. You oh, can yeah. tell because yeah. there's like no interactions. It's all yeah. links. It's all yeah. links. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Show the source. Yeah. Show the source. So, Show the yeah. I don't think you can. <laughs> I, not I, this thing, but we'd have to. Yeah, we'd have to yeah you'd have to like, I mean, somehow it's giving me the. the you can go, you can do a source. Go, go to view. Go to view uh, source. Uh, document, document source. Yeah. You can see the source. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Oh, wow. HTML2. I don't think so. No. You used to write this stuff. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So, right. Oh yeah. I had a Mac. It looked like this all the time, except it wasn't in color because I had a Mac. I'll right. bring it. Garage door yeah, open. So, uh, so we can close it. Old web that today. Yeah, I'm on the Oh my god. Uh, all right. Maybe I should stop going to these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that we'll go down memory lane. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, well, yeah, that's cool. I'm glad it worked because it wasn't working yesterday when I was messing with it. Um, that's pretty amazing. But yeah, it's sweet. It's sweet that people remade it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like I was saying before, uh, the web didn't come out of a vacuum. There was already like TCIP was invented in 1982. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the National Science Foundation, NSFNet, mm -hmm. had let people use their supercomputer. 
which gave you speeds as high as 56 kilobits, which was lightning yeah, fast. Yeah, was... That's still pretty fast. I mean, that's, I mean, that's not bad. That's like slow 3G right now, mm -hmm. which is still pretty pretty fast. I mean, it's not nearly as fast as now, but pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was that was from 1980 to 1990. And then in 1990 to 1995, these are all nice, these are all nice H1. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the way. Yeah. And all the links are A tags. Uh, um, yeah, 1990, Tim Berners Lee wrote the HTTP protocol yeah. and HTML protocol. Um, had them, and they worked hand in hand. I couldn't really find the old RFC for this, but this is the current RFC for request response. Mm -hmm. So this is how this is how the request and response gets made on a website. You request the URL, you specify the method, you specify the address, you specify the client you're using, and then you say what you're accepting. Oh, and you're accepting Gzip cell. No way. Here's what languages you're accepting. I think mm -hmm. we use two and three. Two and three. I have no clue. Three to fit this. I don't know what a lot of this means. I just noticed like the headers that you send in requests. And then the response will give you back all the stuff, stuff, stuff on the page and the the length of the content you're getting, mm -hmm. the type of the content, the status code. Status code. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I forgot what the e-tag does. I looked it up, but I forgot. Maybe that's a three. Um, oh, was that color? No. I don't know. I don't know. No, I think that was like you were allowed to make like your own oh. identifier. For yeah, yeah. Oh, this is newer though because it's Nginx, which didn't exist. Yeah, this is like this is the current spec that I just yeah. I just took oh, the example from. This is from RFC nine one one zero. So, uh, two. Yeah. yeah, HTML is written or based off of HTML. Mm -hmm. Contain many ta basic tags using uh, HTML documents. And here's the first RFC for HTML for hypertext. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned two point because the first one was very kind of right, like great, like you know. There was, yeah. Yeah, there was some deficiencies. So 2.0 is like a good thing that I like, based that was also, one was nearly impossible to find, which was the reason I didn't use it. <laughs> because it wasn't like formalized. It was just kind of like, here's what we're doing. And like, here's how it's kind of working. Yeah. That's what it sounded like from what I was reading. Um, but here's the RFC written by uh, David Connolly and Tim Berners-Lee. We come inside the door. It's pretty cool. You just look all this stuff up. Obviously, I mean, it's all the how the internet started. So there's tons of documentation on that. And then here's the actual like document type definition. If you want to look at all the tags, I wish it was a little better formatted, but it's not too bad. Um, so, but it tells you like everything you can use. Yeah. In in 2.0, um, I used a couple em and strong tags. Oh yeah, we use yeah. Go ahead. Code. I used code for the request response. For you. And uh, there's a lot of stuff. Image. Image is Alt. Alt yeah. was actually surprisingly important because that was as close as you're going to get to uh, compli um, ADA compliance with state mm. Mm. I didn't do that. So this website's not ADA compliant. <laughs> Sad. But uh, yeah, inputs. They had inputs. Um, that was interesting. Selects. They had like a ton of stuff. I was really surprised. Oh, yeah. Text area. I mean, there's a lot of like, there's already some interactivity by HTML2. You also have like uh, so thankfully they, they published the DTD for it. So DTD allows you to then validate the HTML that you're clicking. Okay. Yeah, so its purpose in life. So its purpose in life is to actually let's say you know you got like some HTML and you want to actually validate, hey, is this correct or is this like you know clearly validated or whatever? So the DTD is is considered to be your defining authority. Mm -hmm. okay, exactly. But you'd have to like scan them yeah. both, right? You'd have to like look at this and be like, is this right? And then look at this and be like, yeah. There was no way to like actually run something over your web page and be like, this is right. Well, no, yeah, okay. You'd have to use the key as your kind of command, like, you know, or valid. Can you say sacrifice yeah. in the front? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you were like, yeah, you can put it in your Oh, yeah, cool. The modern way is just say, yeah. doc type HTML. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, basically, you can create your own markup language, yeah, like Jack, Jack ML, you know, uh -huh. and basically, you can publish your DVD. 
Oh, and then you could at the top yeah. be like doc type yes, doc this type URL. URL. Yeah. So whatever follows would have to appear to that. And you can actually write like a validated form too. Okay. Most of our, like our browser, the way they're written, they're very kind of good looking. Yeah. Like even if it's bad, bad input, and like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm, uh -huh. I'm just going to show whatever I can. And then that's about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watched another video on that where like, that was another reason the SGML guys were really mad is because they're like, if you don't close your tags, you should get like a compile error. You shouldn't mm -hmm. you should display the web page. But then uh, oh, no. everyone else was like, everyone actually using the web was like, that's terrible. Like <laughs> if a user sees awesome. compile error on their website, they're just going to delete the entire web browser and download right. a new web browser. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to worry about why it's not working. So. I think that's part, I think that's the reason it introduced so much flexibility into like keep in mind also the, the time of it. I mean nineteen ninety oh, yeah. two or is it ninety three was the introduction of commercial web browsers. Connectivity. Not just browsers, but yeah, connectivity. Yeah, that's true. Like before that, you mm -hmm. could get an account, but usually like to be uh, like the equivalent of an ISP, but mm -hmm. you're usually getting it from PDFs that had gone and bought time like on a fraction of T1 or a T1 if you really want to go. Oh man. <laughs> 24 whole phone lines in that one in those four wires. But the uh, the whole point was that at that point, these people who are having these arguments are still in this older version. They're, they're mostly in academia or military, so they have reasons to say, well, we're teaching this. We need to be, you know, these are also guys who are like, many of them are teaching either Pascal or they might even be te still teaching this because oh, right. airline. Yeah, yeah. This is before a whole bunch of these things, Haskell and all those things where you know they were doing. They were still thinking that well, all of this will help us one day understand how to teach computers to think in human grammar, uh -huh. which sounds absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's because they're thinking of this little pot, right? And they had no clue that their own families would be drowning them. In, in con in doing so yeah yeah they thought it just it would stay in academia and it would be a great example because when i first got um, a cell phone that actually had like extra features and i was like gee it's not very good as a phone i don't understand why you're so into this he's like you're missing the point that's like picking up a television and say hey this would be the best way to watch people read radio scripts <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 they didn't quite get the concept um yeah, that reminded me of something, and I instantly forgot what it was. So uh, that's good. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, like what? Forgot it was something to do with. No, no, no. It, it didn't have something to do with presentation. Something I, I was called New Era, and it's like I'll just move on. Somewhat spicer town. Yeah, than that. Thanks for helping, but I'm not gonna remember, so I'm moving on. Anyway, uh, HTML two. I think so, it says yeah. four. So HTML2 came out in 1995, very end of this section. Mm -hmm. um, it was written, uh, I forget. It's, it'll say right here. Yeah, here, here's your there you go. So, September 21st, 1995. Um, it was written by Tim and Daniel W. Collin. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then, okay, so here's here's the, here's the old pages in all their glory. There's the very first web page written by Tim Berners Lee for his own thing. And uh, oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Mosaic. Yeah, was yeah. That, this mosaic. is that mosaic. Um, I remember what I was gonna say. It was uh, the the whole point of hypertext is to link stuff together. But, yeah, that was like the idea of hypertext. Yeah. So, um, one of the works says that it should be a two way system that you can go back. Oh yeah, it's not can't. something we even. It no. just doesn't. Make it doesn't sense work. Can't even go back on this page. Right? No. I don't have a back button. Actually. Well, not just a back Literally button, but the yeah, idea no. that, like, if, if, <laughs> if the link is by website direction. Website A, yeah. yeah. Oh. Page A links yeah. to page B. Page B must link to page A. Uh -huh, yeah, they, they wanted to buy, yeah. they wanted a yeah. link, doubly linked yeah. list. Yeah, That's what it, they wanted. It's, which is like, how are you going to make that call? What kind of, you know, basically, you'd have to have spiders out on the internet yeah. constantly right. trying to pull those together. Even if we did that now, it would be horrendous. Be traffic no, it would be yeah. terrible. Um, so this is the first web page, just all the links. What's out there? Yeah, you gotta wonder. Yeah. Too bad I can't click on it. Oh uh, yeah. Whoever found this web page yeah. clearly tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find it on the archive. You don't have archive. Yeah. I wonder if I could find it on his own homepage somewhere. I mean, is it on his website? Is this it? No. This is. Oh, he's got some listings from Usenet. 
Just refresh the whole page. I can't click on this. Can you imagine if someone like selling photos of the window and they just turned off the computer? It's all over. It's all over. All right. You could. You had to. There were no tabs, and there were definitely no none of that stuff. So you. I could, but we also treated things like a session and then ending. And then we didn't have the multitasking because we didn't even imagine that that would work. We always assumed that's going to crash. I tried that. <laughs> and you know, because you're doing it on a machine that's like barely understood what the internet was, if you were lucky. Uh -huh. didn't at all. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, we did our first web page at Biomite. Chris Hall actually did it. We brought up the first uh, server on our Sunny Workstation. And he wrote a little page for Biomet, you know, and had basically some simple information about the department and a couple of pictures. But you had to keep the picture, the pictures down to like a couple kilobytes. Oh, yeah. Because people are on dial up. And, you know, you don't want to wait for more than like, 10 seconds for 15 seconds for an image to load. Oh, huh? yeah. And of course, you've got the Wonder App collection still under construction icons. Oh, God. Which would yeah. also oh, yeah. be oh, yeah. small, but they yeah. would use them all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the idea of, like, I'm going to tell you I'm not done. You know, with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder when they came out with SVGs, because uh, I don't know. Um, it was probably a little bit later. SVGs was like maybe a few years afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, they published that. Because yeah, because. Because that's like a fast way to get images. That, that had to do with like scalable and images were like faster images. Right. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was the gap. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip: you should use SVGs whenever you can on websites because they are incredibly small. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, this is Pizza Hut's first website. Welcome to Pizza Hut. Pizza. Well, it really, you can tell it's really the same. And it's got a form oh, that you yeah. can submit. Come on, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, go. Yeah. Go. Uh, 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 we're too broke for OS, OSF1, man. This is like the first place you could buy pizza on the internet. So you couldn't really. No, you just, really you just, you just gave them your name and street address and, and phone, and they call you. Yeah. The front and the ordered and the bag when they made it, they actually had the same interface. Oh, they actually ordered pizza just as if you walked into the store. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. It was one of the first places I did that. I don't remember the year of the Yeah, that's pretty neat. And uh, this, anyone want to guess what this was? Um, if I scroll on too far, I'll give it away. eBay. Yeah, oh, this is eBay. eBay. First eBay it said auction web. It started yeah. off as auction web, and it was called eBay's auction web. Oh yeah, well from eBay. Wow. Yeah. It was, wow. All right, so that is bringing us all the way to 1994, which is the year that cascading style sheets were invented. It's not that far off, right? It's, 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 yeah, I know. I know. Great is right. a nice person. Yeah. Cascade begins. So this is a great. Quote. I love words it. literally of people who want to strap yourselves in. Here it comes. Like, control what their documents look like in ways that would be trivial to Microsoft Word and every other common text processing environment. Sorry, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was Mark Andreessen. He, he basically yeah. loved telling people they couldn't style stuff from what I read uh, and got this quote from. Uh, but sadly, that would come to an end in 1996. Yes. Um, 1994. Also from the CERN labs, a guy named Haikun Wong Lee proposed the idea of CSS. And there was another guy at the same time, Bert Boss, who was making a similar kind of graphics engine for, I think, I really want to say, now that you said Gopher, it's stuck in my head. I want to say it was maybe for Gopher. Maybe mm -hmm. not. But it was for some other, like, we probably work with that. he was yeah. trying to build something for uh, some other, like, common web browser. And it was to get stuff styled. And he was using iCab. Lee was also. Lee was trying to do it in a different place, and Bert. Then they basically teamed up and put both their specs together. And, um, I think it was mostly inspired by what Lee was doing, which I think he used the idea that proposed the cascading style sheets, and Bert was trying to do some sort of language to make it happen. Um, anyway, that was here's like a really good article on the history. 
I don't read through this whole thing, but um, it basically just tells you everything I did in much greater detail. Here's a uh, Burton Boss. No one talks about the CSS guys, but man, have they annoyed people for the last no. 25 years yeah. endlessly. Like, wow, CSS is annoying. But still cool, but really freaking annoying. Oh, so that's the guy. Um, oh, Hawkon. He's not. Okay, so that's. Uh, okay, so he's Swedish. Yeah. Take your word for it. It's Denmark. definitely not English. I mean, the CERN lab is CERN lab is in Switzerland, so yeah, it could be Swiss. But mm -hmm. well, no, because that that a ring that's a toe. Oh, okay. That is that's from. Oh. It's not true. Oh, oh, interesting. Um, anyway, here's some very basic CSS, and I took this from the first CSS spec. Uh, oh, dang it! Did I not link to it? Dang it! Oh well. Um. Pretty easy to find. It's somewhere in this article. Um, but it had class selectors, it had ID selectors, and it had tag selectors. It had the idea of specificity already. But it's not as complicated as it used as it is now. And I didn't dig into it too hard because it was really long. I was surprised. It was like 60 pages. Just the, the very first spec was huge for CSS. We had time. Um, <laughs> we were sitting there waiting for another file book. So we read. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you don't know, if you guys don't already see CSS, um, the general idea of a web page is it loads the HTML and then it applies the CSS to HTML and use, well, now it uses HTML as DOM nodes. I'm not actually sure how it used to do it. Um, and I couldn't really find, couldn't really figure out. So like, yeah, I'll get into that when I get into JavaScript. Pizza Hut versus DOM nodes. DOM nodes. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh yeah. like uh, nodes on the demo. Describe object model code. Yes, 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 yes. But basically, these styles get applied after the HTML and uh, it renders with colors and pictures and text. Uh, it's, it's a box model. So basically, everything you're doing is inside a box, even if people make it look awesome and make balloons and float around. Well, because I worked with people doing tables, so I have a box. You know, oh, like, oh, not to say, sorry, um, what's the, the overlay we had for a while that people had to write? Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, CSS was made, and then the most infamous of all languages, Mocha, in 1995, famously written in 10 days uh, by Brendan Eich, called Mocha Script. Uh, it was because of Netscape 2. Netscape 2 needed a. They wanted some sort of small scripting language. That they could do some general user interactivity with. And so they hired Brendan Ike and told him to write it, and he wrote it in 10 days. And as most of you might know, that went on to be called LiveScript until it was released and called JavaScript. Microsoft made a copy and called it JScript, which I was like, come on. Microsoft, could you be slightly more clever? But I guess not. Um, so Basically, when JavaScript and JScript both came out, there there was a lot of like weird competing standards, and so uh, they went to the European Computer Manufacturers Association, which is known as ECMA. And ECMA in 1997 standardized uh, JavaScript. And this is the very first release of what we know as ECMAScript in 1997. Also surprisingly detailed and deep for a 10-day language. Um, of course, I didn't read through all this either, but I skimmed it. And there's it's there's a lot of stuff that if you use JavaScript a lot, it's just a lot of familiar stuff. Like string coercion, objects, functions as objects, uh, loops, like returns. Like it was really I don't think I think you could probably go back and write if you're if you know JavaScript, you could go back and write the first version of JavaScript with, you know, like a couple of weeks if you had the, a couple of weeks to figure out what you could do and what you couldn't. But the real tricky part is like integrating the JavaScript with the web browser. Okay. And that's where like uh that's where like that's where like the web browsers have to expose APIs to JavaScript. And then you have to use those to actually do something with the website. So um, I could go into that a little, but let me just keep going for a second. Uh, JavaScript 
had the syntax of <laughs> this is funny. JavaScript has a syntax of Java, the prototypal object orientation of self language, which I've never heard of, and the functional first class function style of Lisp languages, and it based it off scheme. So it's kind of like a Frankenstein monster of a yeah. language that took a lot of like parts of different languages that uh, Brendan liked using, I guess. Well, he's in school, so of course, Lisp has scheme. Oh, yeah. Lisp is big as design. Yeah. Um, your father's parent, my parents during parentheses used them. Yeah. Yes. So um, the document object model, uh, this might be the part where I'm not sure if, how many people know about this, but as far as uh, JavaScript's concerned, the way that web pages work now, and this kind of came along in the late or the mid 90s to late 90s, was the whole web page is an object. Um, and I keep doing that. Yeah. Oh, because you want bold face. And so, so, like, if you type document, you have access to like the whole page, essentially. Um, ah, okay. So everything's a class on your document. Whatever. Yeah. There's another, yeah. Uh, there's window and document. And they both, the document object model is saying when you render the page, give me everything on the page as an object and we're calling that object the document so there's like you can get root nodes you can you can accidentally open new windows by pressing control n just kidding um get root node there you go so on the document object model web browsers expose all these functions for you to use and they will give you back um, all your nodes as objects. So right now what this is, and I'm hovering over it, it's lighting up the screen. Here's the whole document. It's giving me back the document as a JavaScript object. And that's the document object model. It takes your HTML, renders it into an object that's in JavaScript and allows you to use JavaScript functions to manipulate those objects. Um, that's how the web works essentially, all the way from all the newest frameworks to all the way back when they were starting this. That's how you interact with web pages with JavaScript. It allows you to do stuff like document.get element by, by tag name. And then you can get like a H1. Uh, unless they won't have any. There we go. So on Firefox, they have a bunch of H2s defined. Um, this actually might be cooler if I didn't on my website, because then I actually know what I wrote. So I have a bunch of H2s. Dang it. So I've got four, or I've got three h2s on the page so i can do document i get elements by tag name h2 and it'll give me an a, a object collection or this is an array actually it'll give me an array of all the objects on the page and then once you get access to the objects on the page you can do yeah. you're going to figure out really soon why people made frameworks it's because typing this stuff in all the time sucked really bad <laughs> Oh, you can open. I mean, basically, the story of frameworks is regular oh, web JavaScript sucked, and they wanted a way for it to suck. Oh, okay. So there you go. Now I have access to my first H2 tag, and there's the text inside. Let the cascade begin. And then you can set the inner HTML. Maybe uh, for, I'm going to forget all these. There's Maybe I can I forget how to do this. No, that's not a fun type. But anyway. Like you could do that with all the all the H2s in there. There's the first, there's the second one, the third one. The fourth one. Oh, that's a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's the document object model. And that's like how the internet works right now. You make your HTML into a JavaScript object and you manipulate JavaScript on the page. Um so yep, that is and the thing we're going into, the like fall of the internet, as it were, 
the next step is jQuery. And what jQuery did was allow you to access stuff on the page much easier with the little dollar sign attributes. No problem. Um, Any problem? I'll go into that. Well, like Part two. Thing that, well, one of the first things that jQuery did was all the browsers implemented bits of JavaScript. And it, it was, oh. So jQuery very different. It had all the inconsistency. Okay. Netscape Navigator, Internet Explorer, and all of them. They made a consistent interface. Okay, cool. This is a very, very valuable thing. Oh, yeah. His yeah. name was uh, John Racing, R E S I T, you know? And uh, yeah, he, like everybody thanks him for. Yeah. Because I hear a lot of people online being like, jQuery was pretty good back when it came out. People were like excited about it. Yeah. Made stuff. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I haven't done a ton of research on jQuery, so I'm actually super interested to learn about it. I just know of it as a concept. It's still around. Uh, yeah, yeah, people still use it. I mean, it's not that old. I mean, it came out like what, 2005? It's, it's old enough that it might not be able to get into on JDate. On what? JDate? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and then just to finish up this JavaScript section, uh, this new DOM, by the way, looks way different than the old DOM. The objects you get access to have way more properties than they used to. Um, I found the reference because I was I was going to try to write some of this in Netscape 3 syntax. But the only thing without it being annoying I could do are like, you know, like alerts or whatever. So I made a little alert that pops up when you click on a button. Uh, cool, guys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the way you access the DOM elements in this is not the same syntax as you use right now. So I couldn't, I literally could not. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm. So I couldn't, I actually couldn't do what they're doing in Netscape Navigator. There's also this thing in Netscape Navigator called applets, which are like putting Java code into yep. the internet, <laughs> basically. I didn't want to mess we, with that. That was so. a big deal for, because until then, it wasn't interactive. If you did not you didn't have like little animated, you know, think about it as, oh, well, yeah, that's what Flash is. Flash was a re attempt to focus on visuals, mm -hmm. but like just having that changed whether you wanted to really stick to this and you can make it because that was text to load fast enough. You could actually have interaction while you're waiting for other things to happen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Flash was horrible. Oh, yeah. And it stayed horrible. It so there's that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I was. Remember, the only good thing about it was Strong Dad's email. I wasn't brave enough to make a Java applet. So uh, maybe one day I'll try it. But, oh, yeah, that's true. They're probably just not supported either. So. Anyway, here's the new and improved 1999 yeah. eBay. Oh, yeah. Complete with CSS and JavaScript. Yeah. Welcome back, Rosie. Um, oh, and just to finish it all up, I have a little bit of javascript on this page so to so write javascript that executed after the html you would put it into a script tag i'm sure it's one the script tag would like hold your your state of your all your functions and stuff It'll probably dissolve and and it had to be run after because i think it's because you needed to run all the html first just in case the script tag wanted to manipulate the Anything on the page. Yeah, the DOM has to be loaded. Right. The DOM has to be loaded. And then the script tag has to manipulate the DOM. And then you can execute the function. So um, that's how I wrote that little alert. Uh, you do a little on click handler on the button, which was available in Netscape Nav Navigator if you're uh, just letting you guys know. And then <laughs> you click on it. And uh, it runs this function. Let's see if it'll let me be super. Probably not, but we'll see. Hello. But it is running this function. Um, and that's how you get that. And uh, that is the early internet. Cool. Oh, yeah. And also, Amazon was very impressed. Oh, yeah. Where is my first books? Yeah. Off Amazon, like right after, like while I was still in college, so before like, 1995, Nice. We were all in shock, like, Wait, you don't have to type the www. No, you just go. Yeah, that's, 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 that's so smart. These guys must be marketing geniuses. Like, that's how shocking. 
Yes. How do they do it? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Is this your uh well I assume like if you wanted to go to FTP, you FTP dot blah blah blah. Right. Yeah, like like you speak, you speak, yeah. not, or even if it were some, when it was smarter, you actually it's the thing that's before your colon slash slash. You're supposed to be telling it this is the protocol I'm about to use so you do FTP. Oh or, yeah. Or you know finger. Well the old browsers did you. not assume HTTP. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. if you didn't put that in, it would just right. try to connect to the port, you know, on some the state, port on browsers, you can still like use file colon. Oh, yeah, it's sure. local to your machine oh, and you can. Files. Oh, you can. Yeah. Browsers do it all. Yeah, which is great because um in Firefox, because it's centered on Java so long ago, mm -hmm. it still allows you, you have to set a couple of buttons, but you can still get the contents from an art from a compressed file. As if it were a full site. Oh, and the, I know oh. no, this is a, it's a real time yeah. saver because what you do is you call it and say, okay, this thing, bang, you know, da da da, dot zip or dot gz, bang, and then you give the, the address inside of their phone, outside of that call. And by doing this, one, you could have a compressed website just sitting on the sheet. So this is useful, for example, if you needed the Oracle documentation and you didn't want to have to transfer like bunch of tens files. of thousands of files. Well, now you have this thing that's one file, so it moves over faster, and on that. Okay, this loads up. But also, it was doing this because all compressions could call back to a Java archive or a jar. So what you're doing is you tell it it's a jar, and it doesn't care what kind of jar it is. It just knows, oh, archive file. There's going to be nested content in there. I will grab it as. Can we yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I should I'll pull my laptop up later and show you this new stuff that they have. That's was that before? Yeah. Solomon was a character. Is that what the, oh, he's he's the character? He's a character. He's a whole face. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not just a goof. <laughs> 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 I know someone whose job was to keep him away from me. That was oh, my yeah. entire job. Oh my god. And this is like someone who's gone on to be like oh, a major yeah. admin does that yeah. impressive stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But like suffered the gave because she could. He gave a talk to Kent State uh Linux group, mm -hmm. which had to rename themselves the uh BSD oh, yeah. open source Linux group or something like that. He is went here. In fact, he offered to come to the one active in Elon. Yeah. And he said, well, but, you know, you'd have to change your name before I'd come down. And he was willing to come if we changed our name to the BSD, you know, or open lint, you know. It's so like, like, yeah, go stick it. <laughs> we can change it for one month and then, he, you know, after you have to change it back. <laughs> but he's, he was extremely crazy. I'm going to add yeah. this, this week off an hour. Yeah. yeah. Scott McCarty could give you a lot of stories about because he stayed with Scott for some time. Oh, yeah. There it is. Next week, everyone get excited. All the internet. All the internet. Yeah, it's still on. It's still on. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really interesting because it started off out in, uh, where was it? In Illinois. But, uh, Mosaic, yeah. Mosaic, Champagne, yeah. Urbana. Had the first um, web, uh, the first server. What was it called? Remember? That's when Al Gore invented the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it a server, but it was a server for uh, Mosaic. And I yeah. can't remember what it was uh, also called Mosaic. But, um, and that's what led eventually to uh, something, something, something D. Okay. Oh, was it just called HTTPD? Like, that was HTTPD. Yeah. yeah. And it was Mosaic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then the HTTP you would run was this, you know, yeah, was my, my only web browser access was on a sun machine. Oh, my. Well, well, that's what we had when we were sons at that time. And it was actually pretty good neat. Job. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Exactly. Thank you. I'm going to close down the. Uh, I do this kind of for my own good, too, because I really like learning about the history of. It's it's pretty nice. It's like it's super nice way to learn why stuff happens. You are quite young and did not live in the time when we would 
like we said, we did two single serving events. That's you had to be home right. with a 